Hi, this is Pat Moorhead and the 6.5 is in the Micron booth at Mobile World Congress 2023 in Barcelona, Spain. The energy is high here, Dan. I know we've talked about this a lot, but I just can't tell you the difference between the past few years and 23. Yeah, I mean, other than the people that watched all of our videos contiguously, <laughs> they won't realize how much we did end up talking about that. But you know what? Uh, we're in the third day here and it's great to see the energy not really tailing off. In fact, to some extent, Wednesday morning felt almost as energetic to me as Monday morning. But like I said, it's more of the macro that I'm really appreciating because you know, when you stay home a lot and you kind of listen to the news, you start to feel kind of, oh, is the market's gonna go bad and 23 is gonna be a terrible year. The business conversations we're having here are people are investing, people That's are right. moving forward. And I think 23 is gonna shape up to be okay. And I think we're gonna head towards a really exciting and energetic 24. Yeah, well, I'm super excited to talk uh, today with the new head of the Mobile BU. Mark, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Happy to be at the show. Yeah, thanks for uh, coming on. First first timer, new job. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. You know, thanks and and what a great show to, to kind of do your first video on the 6.5 because mobility is kind of important here at the show, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, Very. it's called <laughs> Mobile, Mobile World, World Congress. Congress. Okay. Hey, we said that together. I know. Perfectly. Well, we sometimes we think the same. Sometimes we we complete each other's sentences. Read each other's thoughts. It's getting yeah. it's getting to this be is, really this cute. This is a bromance. Hey, uh, Mark, you're uh, you're part of something special here. So, <laughs> give us the kind of the gist. Uh, new role. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Talk a little bit about what you're excited about. Give us a little background on okay. you for uh, for our audience. Yeah, happy to do that. So uh, I'm the new mobile GM at at Micron but I'm not new to mobile nor new to Micron. <laughs> so uh, just a little bit about me real quick. Uh, previously at Micron, I was running our high performance memory group. So these are the world's fastest memories. This is high end graphics. HBM. HBM. Yeah. We're talking about picajoules per bit and terabytes per second in performance. So that's, that's my background at Micron. And in mobile, I, at, at previous companies, I've been doing wireless connectivity for quite a while. No, oh, that's great. And you know, it's it's so fun when you move to a different role that the end the end market is is so dramatically different. But you know, as I always said, it it always just gets down to PPA, right? Uh, uh, for 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 the use case. But that is that is the truth. And I, I'm curious though. Um, sometimes end users, and I think uh, typically it's a function of marketing spend on the processor. Yeah. Uh, they think of that. Sometimes they think of graphics. Uh, but I'm curious, what is it, what does the end user need to think about when they're buying a new phone related to memory? Because, you know, if you have the right SOC without the right memory or the right storage, I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of like a fiddler crap, you know? That is absolutely correct. And, and users are thinking about memory. Yeah. They are thinking about storage. They may not call it that. They may talk about yeah. the form factor of the phone, the experience they're having with the phone their ability to play games, how long the phone lasts, hugely enabled by the capabilities of the memory and storage. That's why I'm excited to be at Micron yeah. and why I was excited for this role. It's the things that really matter to people on their phones that memory enables. Yeah, there's no doubt that, uh, you know, in the memory capacity is out there, uh, but there's also the, the memory's inherent role and even the battery life, right, that, that, that goes into it that, that users need to you know, they expect a certain level of experience and memory brings that to the table that as well. And that expectation is growing yes. every year as phones get more capable, as we use them to do more. And it's just unacceptable in, in today's world to charge midday. And a yeah. huge component of that, as you just pointed out, is memory. Micron's really at the forefront of designing the lowest power memories. Like I told you my background in, in the previous role. Right. How do you get we literally are measuring picajoules per bit of transfer <laughs> right. and driving that down generationally. Yeah, I think uh, we talk about this ad nauseum on the show, but like, memory and storage just don't always get enough credit because we always kind of like to focus on the speed. It's kind of like a car with you know, horsepower and brakes. It's like, it's great right. if you can go fast, but you got to stop. You know, there's a very uh, you know, symbiotic relationship that the two play, but you know, Micron's not the only memory game in town. I mean, there's other companies that make a lot of claims that say they have great performance on their memory side. And, you know, we just had a video with uh, Qualcomm talking about why they, you know, built their flagship. But I mean, from your point of view, when you're kind of getting into the differentiation and the value of Micron and why Micron wins the designs it does and why it's yeah. become so important in the mobile space, how do you kind of position that? Yeah, love that question because it speaks to the heart of what we do at Micron. Yeah. Mike, when I joined Micron, 
it was like I'd come home because this is a, a culture of innovation. I mean, really, we don't start a product, we don't sit down, understand what's going to delight customers, what's going to bring new competitive value, and how we can be a leadership in it. We would never launch a product that we don't believe is going to be a leadership product bringing real value and innovation. So first and foremost, it's built on that culture. And second, it's about how do you drive that now with your customers in a way that's valuable to them. Creating, creating capabilities that, that aren't usable in, in the phones is also not a value. So super close partnership with our, with, uh, you know, our, our, our lead chipset vendors, but also the handset makers. We have joint labs set up with most of the major co companies where we really look at what we can do to innovate together. We'll be demonstrating some of that at the show today. Yeah, yeah my relationship with Micron goes back to, I think, 2001, okay. um, uh, maybe, maybe earlier. And <clears throat> there was a period where Micron wasn't talking a lot about what it, it was doing. And then what I was so happy to see about two and a half years ago is, is First of all, you came out with some seriously leadership technologies, uh, whether it was on the mobile side, high performance, uh, memory and storage, right? Yes. Yes. First to this, uh, first to that, and that's hard to do uh, in, in, in this business. So on the mobile side, uh, can you talk about some of your latest, love to. greatest technology? Yeah, I'd love to. I was just uh, at, a, uh, at a very large event in uh, Japan back in November, where we were demonstrating the world's first one beta DRAM. Right. And one beta in, in, in the, in the uh, DRAM world is smaller geometries, lower powers. Right. My, Micron right. is the first to demonstrate that. And the first product within that process is our LPDDR5X uh, solution. And that'll be ramping in phones you know, this year and next year, and really bring in new, new capability. So at Micron, it's built on creating next generation process technology, next generation packaging technology, which brings it all together, and then working really closely to make sure that we bring those in cadence with when they're needed in the market too. Because as you know, while things move very fast, they move at a pretty specific cadence and you have to make sure you line up. To yeah, those. and then what some people don't fully realize is that is that not only are you a designer, but you are a very large manufacturer. Yes. And, and if anything, what we've seen when it comes to supply chain and the ability to get products to where they're being manufactured, that has really shifted. And the great news is that you are locked in with these capabilities, unlike some other folks. It's, it is a big important part of our differentiation, having both memory business and leading technology, yeah. storage business and leading technology, and then a supply chain that's worldwide and can really be used to, to the advantage of our customers. It's a huge part of the, of the Micron value proposition. Right, and semiconductors have definitely had a moment over the last few years. If there was one kind of very quiet benefit to the semiconductor industry during this whole supply chain shortage was, it was the global awareness that it created yeah. Yeah. about the importance of all the things in our lives that we need semiconductors for. Wow, like all, it became a dinner table conversation, you know, something that people that had never thought about, like, oh my gosh, like I can't buy a car, I can't buy a refrigerator, I can't get a TV because they don't get the chips. And obviously, Micron's part of that. But, you know, that's a little history at this point. Yeah. There's plenty of chips now. Yep. Um, at least at the moment, it'll, it'll come, the cycle will come again. That's chips, what this, sure. this industry does, is cycles. It cycles incredibly well. But the future. Um, you know, over the last few weeks, I don't think any topic has been more front of mind in tech than probably generative AI. I mean, that's one use case, but I'm saying like, this stuff is now a lot of it's kind of cloud data center core use applications, but it's going to go to the edge. We had Cristiano Amon, CEO of Qualcomm, join us for a conversation about this, yep. talking about on device. Micron has to be thinking about this too. Absolutely. This is going to have to drive huge increases in, in, in storage and memory requirements. How, how do you prepare for that? It, it, it is driving big increases. I mean, I like the way you're describing it. People are used to having tremendous capability with their phone, right. and it's really mostly backed by large cloud services that are doing that comp that compute and that, you know, more and more it needs to move to the edge for, for a lot of reasons, the expectation, the ease of use, and the storage requirements, the memory requirements go, go up dramatically. We're preparing for it, we're driving next generations of process technology, next generations of, of, of connectivity interfaces. We're working on LP5, LP5X, LP6, and multiple generations. Yeah. There's a long pipeline of technology innovations that are, are in preparation for just that exact event. Yeah, it's interesting, uh, you know, Mark, in your experience, you've seen, again, the, the bookends, right? You're, you're new to the mobile division, but you're doing the highest performance 
uh, part of the market as well. Uh, national Labs, Hyperscalers, yep. uh, all of these. What are you most excited about, uh, about semiconductors in general? Are the things that you're thinking about, things you're excited about that uh, you know, you'd like to share with the audience? Yeah, one or two. One is that the complexity that we're able to deliver now actually brings simplification to, the, to, to people's use cases. It was very hard to use technology going back even just a few years. And with the complexity that we're able to deliver now in these, in these uh, most recent advances, it's actually a lot easier to use and that's going to continue. Yeah. And I'm also very excited about the, the new services and capabilities that having an edge capable device will deliver. Nobody thought 10 years ago about ride sharing or, or, or some of the food delivery services. But once you enable all these capabilities, you know, all the partners we see here at the show are going to build whole new levels of service. So, yeah, that's what I get excited about is we're not at the end of an innovation era. Right. I, I'm sitting in meetings where we're talking about 2030 and what we're going to be doing, you know, post 2030. So, very long innovation pipeline in support of a whole new slew of services and capabilities where the edge is in your hand. Not a portal to the edge, but the ability to, to actually uh, drive edge computing there. Yeah, it's interesting. Uh... Just on a on a micro version of that, you know, some some of the uninformed will talk about, hey, let's talk about six G. You know, five G's over, mm -hmm. and all the companies that I'm talking here, all the way in the value chain, all the way from the carriers to the to the uh, semiconductor makers, uh, we're literally in the middle of it right now, yes, right? right? And whether it's SA at the core, uh, whether it's uh, new RAN capabilities, massive MIMO to enable the true, the, the trillion devices on the edge in the industrial IoT, uh, I am completely with you. And the great part is there are things that will happen in 10 years that none of us have even thought of before, that they're going to be there. And you're going to be there. We expect you to be there, Mark. We'll be there. We're going to have the storage <laughs> and the memory, and we'll be talking more about memory inside. I do think that you will see over, you talked about how more recently we have chip conversations now at the dinner table. Yes. You're going to be talking more about memory and storage, because it really is an important yeah. enabler to all of this. I don't know about you, but actually, I think my kids probably talk more about memory than any other processing power, because when they're, yeah. well, when they run out of Memory, especially right? storage, right? Yeah, <laughs> storage. You know, when they run out. Of, sorry, when they run out of storage for videos, when they run, you right. know, they are asking for how do I get back up to the cloud? Or you know, they're thinking about it though. You know, where they rarely actually think about why is this not processing as well? Like, right? But they do think about I, I, I've taken too much video. I and mean, these younger generations, it's not just photos, it's video. I mean, all these apps, the the, the TikToks and the snaps, they're creating dozens, if not hundreds, of videos a day and the, as the cameras get better yeah that drives more memory and then as you start taking this in, and we didn't talk about the metaverse and we're kind of out of time but i mean well your kids are going to love some of the technology that micron is working on and delivering right now for example th that that situation you just described a lot of lot of video a lot of adding and deleting apps yeah. eventually your phone <clears throat> slows down absolutely right? it basically gets messy on the inside right and micron has innovated a technology we're demonstrating here today we call it arb automatic read burst and silently, privately, it right. keeps your, your data and storage close, clean, and fast, so that a year from now, your phone's just as fast as it was in day one. Who wouldn't want that? Exactly, I love it. All right, Mark, well, thank you so much for joining us here. Thank you for having me. All right, everybody, you saw it here. Hit that subscribe button, we'd love to have you for all of our 6.5 episodes here at MWC 2023 in Barcelona. We're in the Micron booth. We appreciate all of you tuning in, but for this one, for Patrick and myself, it's time to say goodbye. Thanks for joining us.